All right, so this website, I mean, let's look at this. This is looking fantastic, a billion dollar website already, but it definitely needs some CSS. I don't know, maybe I wanna change all these headings to blue or something. So remember, our CSS actually goes in the static directory since it's just a static file, it doesn't change. So I'm gonna right click this and hit new style sheet and I'm just gonna name this style CSS. You can actually name it any CSS that you want. It doesn't matter because we specify it later on. So I'm just gonna write style.css and let me just write some quick CSS in here. Uh, wait, what heading was this? All right, so we'll change the color of headings, heading one, just so, I don't know. And uh, what's cool color? Actually, let me pick one of these. Mm, no, okay, deep sky blue, <laughs> there we go. All right, so we have the CSS file that says all heading ones are deep sky blue because our boss looked at this and he's like, this is beautiful, but I wish that this was deep sky blue. We got this, we can do this. All right, so now if we just run this right here, nothing would happen because we need to specify for profile to HTML, use this file right there. How do we do that? Well, so glad you asked. What you can do is you can add link, rel style sheet, and this is just, you know, not flash, just basic HTML. Now for type, text CSS, okay, nothing new. Now you may be thinking, okay, so this is the point where I actually link to the CSS file. So I'm probably just gonna go like static and then style slash ESS. But what you actually want to do is you actually want to call a flask function from here. All right, now why you do this is gonna make sense in just a second, but the function is called URL underscore four. So we want a URL for static is the first parameter. And the second one is just the file name. So file name is equal to, if I can type, style.css. All right, so remember, this isn't a hard-coded URL, it's actually dynamic. And what it's doing is it's getting the URL for the static, and it already knows where that is, and inside that directory is a file called style.css. That's what we wanna do. So now, if I go ahead and run this bad boy again, check it out. Let me go ahead and refresh it, and there you go. And if we actually look at the source code, we see that what it did is it generated that URL for us. But now we're scratching our head thinking, you know what? It was kind of a pain in the butt typing, you know, uh, this entire Python function when we could have just as easily have written this. So, you know what? F that real bucky. I'm just gonna, you know, write my pass right in my um, HTML templates. Seems a lot easier that way. Well, the cool thing about doing it this way is a lot of the time whenever you're making a website, what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually maybe move these CSS to another location, move all these style sheets around, and whenever you do that, all of your templates are gonna get messed up. Let's say that you had 50 different templates, you're gonna have to go through every single file and say, okay, now update this, update this, update this a million times. However, what you can actually do is if you throw in this function, then later on I'm gonna be showing you guys how to change the default static directory in one line of code, and you only have to update it in one place, and then all of your templates still work perfectly. So it may look like, you know, kind of unnecessary and pain in the butt right now, but trust me guys, whenever you're building a large web application, you wanna set it up this way. This is a standard Flask way to do it, and well, there you go. So that is how not only use HTML templates, but how you can also use static files like CSS and other in your Flask web application. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.